Welcome to Confessing the Faith, a theological and devotional walk through the 1689 Baptist Confession of Faith. I am your host, Sam Waldron. I'm one of the pastors of Grace Reformed Baptist Church in Owensboro, Kentucky, and the professor of systematic theology here at Covenant Baptist Theological Seminary. Today, we return to consider chapter 17 of the Confession, which takes up the very important subject of the perseverance of the saints. Paragraph two deals with the grounds of this perseverance. We take up the last two of those grounds in this podcast, the oath of God and the nature of the covenant of grace, from all which ariseth also the certainty and infallibility thereof. The confession speaks of the oath of God. Since a covenant is an oath certified promise, the reference of the confession to the oath of God is closely related to the later reference to the covenant of grace. The allusion is clearly to Hebrews 6, 16 to 20. That passage refers to the fact that God has given his people not only his promise, but his oath. The God who always keeps his promises and thus has no obligation to confirm his promises by swearing an oath. The God who has no one greater than himself by whom to swear an oath has yet confirmed his promises by swearing an oath by himself. The single reason for all this seemingly needless effort and superfluous oath-taking on God's part is the comfort of true believers. It is to give us strong encouragement and anchor of the soul and a hope both sure and steadfast. But fifthly, the confession speaks of another ground of perseverance, and this is the last one we'll consider, when it speaks of the nature of the covenant of grace. The infallibility of the covenant of grace means that it is not liable to failure. God's covenant of grace does not fail to save those in covenant with him. It is unfailing. It actually and unfailingly saves those, all those in the covenant. In the confession, the term covenant of grace designates the single divine plan or scheme of salvation from the beginning of the world to the end. The full discovery of the covenant of grace was completed in the New Testament, see chapter 7, paragraph 3. The new covenant is the definitive revelation of the covenant of grace. The new covenant is summarized, however, in Jeremiah 31, verses 31 to 34, where we read, verse 31, Behold, days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah, not like the covenant which I made with their fathers in the day I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, my covenant which they broke, although I was a husband to them, declares the Lord. But this is the covenant which I will make with the house of Israel after those days, declares the Lord. I will put my law within them, and on their heart I will write it, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. They will not teach, again, each man his neighbor and each man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for they will all know me from the least of them to the greatest of them, declares the Lord, for I will forgive their iniquity, and their sin I will remember no more. Now notice the contrast found here between the Old and New Covenant in the words, not like the covenant. The Old Covenant could be broken. It was broken. It did not assure the salvation or the perseverance of those within it. Jeremiah 31, 32 with Hebrews 8, 7, and 8 makes clear that this was what the writer of Hebrews calls its fault. The new covenant is different. It assures the salvation and the perseverance of all those in it. See Jeremiah 31, 33, and 34, as well as Jeremiah 32, 40. The idea that anyone who has a genuine title to the new covenant, who really is in the new covenant, may fail to continue and persevere in it, and finally perishes is foreign to the Bible. The idea that the babies of believers are in the new covenant requires the added notion that all of them will persevere and be saved. And no pedo-baptist pedo believes that. The emphatic assertion of the scriptures is that all those ever brought into the new covenant are finally saved. We are to be personally assured of our final perseverance and salvation. The perseverance of the saints is not to be just an abstract truth, but a personal confidence. The language involves this. It is a seal, an anchor, a pledge. Christianity marked by a lack of true assurance 
is just as defective as Christianity marked by a false assurance. The Confession closes paragraph two by stating the inevitable result of these great realities, from all which ariseth also the certainty and infallibility thereof. The result of all these major dimensions of biblical truth is to render the doctrine of the perseverance of the saints absolutely certain. It is not necessary to endeavor to explain every problem passage or millions of views to argue against it, since the major grounds for this doctrine just examined are not overthrown by such problem passages, such problem passages remain only problem passages and not serious objections to the doctrine itself.